Hi everybody. Welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, neurologist from Rajmandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, anisocoria, the inequality of pupils. Anisocoria approach, cranial nose part 20, oculomotor nose part 6. The pupil, the function of the pupil is to control the amount of light entering the eye, ensuring optimal vision for the lighting conditions. So the function of the pupil is to control the amount of light entering the eye, ensuring optimal vision for the lighting conditions. The normal pupil size is about 2 to 6 millimeters in diameter. So the size of the normal pupil is 2 to 6 millimeters in diameter. Pupillary size depends primarily on the balance between the sympathetic which causes the dilatation of the pupil and the parasympathetic innervation which causes constriction of the pupil and the level of ambient illumination. The most important determinants are the level of illumination and the point at which the eyes are focused. So now let's talk about the small pupil, meiotic pupil. Pupils less than 2 millimeters in diameter are meiotic pupils. The neurologically significant process of meiosis include Horner syndrome and neurosyphilis. Acute brainstem lesions such as spontane hematoma, hematoma may cause bilaterally pinpoint pupils. Here again lies a very important concept. Why in a pontine lesions we have bilaterally pinpoint or small pupils but why in medulla we have a single small pupil ipsilaterally. It is because of the blood supply of the medulla oblongata and pons. Medulla oblongata is supplied by two vertebral arteries whereas pons is supplied by a single basilar artery. We have two sympathetic pathways running through the entire brainstem which are placed sideways. So when there is medulla oblongata getting affected because of a vertebral artery, the sympathetic pathway on the ipsilateral side where the vertebral artery is affected gets affected and therefore the pupil on that particular side is small because sympathetic pathway causes dilatation of the pupil when it gets affected it causes small pupil. So in medulla oblongata because it is supplied by two vertebral arteries if vertebral artery gets affected on one side the pupil is small on the same side of that of the lesion. Whereas pons is supplied by a single basilar artery unlike medulla which is supplied by two vertebral arteries and therefore when the pons when the basilar artery gets affected suppose when there is a basilar artery hemorrhage the blood goes diffusely bilaterally affects both the sympathetic tracts and therefore there is bilateral pinpoint pupils. So it is because of the blood supply in medulla oblongata there is a small size pupil ipsilaterally only on one side whereas in pons because of the blood supply that is a single basilar artery both sides sympathetic pathways gets affected so we get bilateral Horner syndrome that is bilaterally pinpoint pupils very important concept. Then let's see the large pupil. Pupils more than 6 millimeters in diameter are dilated and we call that as a midriatic pupils. The neurologically significant midriasis occurs in midbrain lesions that is the third nerve palsy in posterior communicating artery aneurysms. The third nerve, the parasympathetic fibers run superficially on the third nerve. So when the third nerve gets affected in the midbrain like herniation, uncle herniation, or posterior communicating artery aneurysm, the superficially parasympathetic fibers are the first to get affected and since parasympathetic causes constriction of the pupil and since it is affected, the pupils are dilated. Here again there is an important concept. Extrinsic compression of the third nerve like posterior communicating artery aneurysm or uncle herniations will affect the superficially placed parasympathetic fibers first and therefore the pupillary pupils getting affected, the pupillary dilatation is the earliest sign in a compressive pathology of the third nerve. 
whereas if it's an intrinsic palsy of the third node where the center of the third node gets affected like diabetes it causes all the clinical manifestations of the third node palsy like drooping of the eyelid divergent squint double vision but pupils are usually not affected because pupillary fibers are superficially placed whereas an intrinsic pathology of the third node like diabetes affects the center of the third node and therefore superficially placed parasympathetic fibers are usually spared and therefore in diabetic third node palsy or for that matter any intrinsic palsy of the third node the pupils are never affected even if it gets affected it is the last to get affected so in a compressive lesion of the third node palsy like a posterior communicating artery aneurysm or herniation the first manifestation the earliest to get affected is pupil whereas if it's an intrinsic palsy of the third node like diabetes the pupil is the last to get affected or sometimes it is not affected that's why diabetic third node palsies are sometimes known as pupillary sparing third node palsy so an approach to anisocoria small pupils as i said it is honor syndrome because the sympathetic pathways are affected if it's a large pupil it is a third node palsy we get light near dissociation in two conditions argel robertson pupil where the pupil is small and in addis pupil where the pupil is large right anisocoria aniso means unequal cor means pupil so anisocoria means unequal pupils a difference of 0.25 mm is noticeable and a difference of 2 mm is considered significant so 0.25 mm it could be physiological so how do we differentiate it in physiological anisocoria the degree of inequality remains about the same in light and dark whereas in honor syndrome the inequality is more in the darkness whereas in third nerve palsy the inequality is more in the light in darkness what happens darkness stimulates the sympathetic pathway so when the sympathetic pathway on one side is normal the pupil gets dilated but when the sympathetic pathway on the other side is affected like honor syndrome the pupil does not get dilated because the sympathetic pathway is affected and therefore when the anisocoria a large pupil on one side and a small pupil on the other side increases the anisocoria increases in darkness it is honor syndrome when we throw light light stimulates the parasympathetic function and therefore pupil constricts so when we throw light the normal pupil constricts but the pupil where the parasympathetic is affected does not constrict and therefore anisocoria increasing in light is suggestive of a parasympathetic third nerve palsy whereas in physiologic anisocoria the degree of inequality remains about the same both in light and dark this is well depicted in this uh, table so differentiating anisocoria from a honor syndrome and third nerve palsy using light and dark conditions so we have etiological factors that is physiological anisocoria honor syndrome and left third nerve palsy on the one side and ambient light strong light darkness and conclusion so what happens in physiological anisocoria the same relative asymmetry is present under all conditions whereas in honor syndrome you can see in the diagram when there is darkness the more asymmetry in the dark abnormal pupil cannot dilate whereas if it's a third nerve palsy when there is a strong light there is more asymmetry in this strong light because abnormal pupil cannot constrict and therefore anisocoria increasing in darkness is suggestive of honor syndrome anisocoria increasing in bright light is suggestive of a third nerve palsy so these are all the important concepts in approaching a person who's got anisocoria approach to anisocoria i hope you have enjoyed listening to this lecture some of the important concepts of neurology i have put in a question form answer format uh, in a book called focus neurology where i am the author dr s srinivas this book is available online from all leading booksellers including amazon if interested it could be bought online i hope you have enjoyed listening to my lecture if you have liked it like listening to my lecture please like it share it but please subscribe to my youtube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my web page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.